This episode was sponsored by Wix. The Zetation class is one of the most powerful build types in the history of the game. Some of the most broken abilities and some of the most powerful stats can be accessed by playing this build. When it comes to the Marine server, Cetaceans boast some of the highest intelligence and HP stats possible, and they're relatively new to the competitive scene. The story of the Cetaceans' rise to power is perhaps one of the most unique stories in the entire history of the game. The Cetacean build began when some low-level mammal players tried to create a mammalian version of the Crocodile build. It didn't work very well catching players on the shore, and because warm-blooded builds have a higher food cost, this was especially problematic. But this build was surprisingly effective at catching fish in the water, due to their high aquatic agility. And so they basically just kept spending evolution points buffing traits related to hunting fish until eventually they'd reallocated just about all of their land-based ability skill points to aquatic ones. It wasn't long before the seas were dominated by cetacean players, both of the smaller, more agile variety and of the new giant powerhouse variety. Skipping forward to today, we've got a multitude of powerful cetacean builds occupying different roles within the meta. So as always, let's delve into the different variations of the cetacean class and rank them on a tier list. Now I'm happy to say that I'm going to have to start pretty high up on the tier list when rating cetaceans. There aren't any I could even consider at or below average. All of them are at least B tier. But yeah, starting in B tier we have the two cetacean builds that are specifically adapted to the arctic server, the beluga and the narwhal. So the Beluga and the Narwhal both made sacrifices to mobility in order to gain the cold resistance perk that they needed in order to survive the Arctic server. On top of the typical choice to put points into Blubber, Belugas and Narwhals both also opted to cut the Dorsal Fin perk, which lowers their overall agility in the water, but helps conserve heat. Both also made significant sacrifices to their vision, but luckily for them, Cetaceans have access to one of the most overpowered abilities in the entire game, Echolocation. Only a few classes have unlocked this ability, Cetaceans, bats, shrews, and a few others. And it lets them entirely negate the stealth abilities of other players. If you're playing as a fish, crustacean, or cephalopod, and you hear this sound, know that you've been detected and will need to either take cover or prepare to fight. This ability also helps them detect locations where they can resurface to breathe, since a big danger of the whale's playstyle of living down under the ice is being unable to find an opening in the ice where they can come up for air. In the case of the Narwhal, their tusk does grant them bonus damage and a pretty powerful intimidation buff, but honestly they don't really need this, they're already quite well suited to taking out fish players. But the extra attack range certainly doesn't hurt. The only reason I rate these builds as lower than other cetaceans is because the other builds are more versatile in the servers that they can play on, rather than limiting themselves only to the arctic. At the top end of B tier, we have the Boto, a smaller cetacean build specifically adapted for the Amazon River. This build is special because it puts the maximum amount of evolution points into the echolocation skill. Along its snout are whiskers that buff the accuracy of echolocation's target locating effect. This offsets the near total blindness of the Boto. The Boto doesn't really have a ton of competition in its local meta, so it's tough to gauge its prowess in combat. The other top tiers of the region include the Jaguar and the Otter, but neither of them are big enough or mobile enough to successfully bring down a Boto. It'd be a lot easier to place them if they had to contend with crocodiles and sharks for control of the rivers. But the one thing that I can say is that one of the cetacean's other big weaknesses is particularly bad for the Bodo. Cetaceans lack a sense of smell, and this leaves them particularly vulnerable to pollution. Pollution is a big problem in the Amazon, and without the ability to sense when the water around you is contaminated, the Bodo is at a pretty high risk for being poisoned by the waste generated by human players. Next on the tier list is a group that I personally really dislike for being kinda lazy brain-dead characters that are nonetheless extremely powerful. I'm talking about baleen whales, such as the blue whale and humpback whale. Baleen whales are a variation of the cetacean build that arose when cetaceans first really hit the big time, reaching such a massive size that size alone was the only defense that they really needed. And so they kinda just took all of the really cool, unique abilities that cetaceans had and said, well why would I need that when I can just be real big? and so they opted to sacrifice their equilocation ability to reach the maximum HP level attainable. They also traded their teeth for an entirely new style of weapon called Baleen. Baleen doesn't do any damage in combat, except against players in the micro weight class. Most of the time, larger builds don't bother griefing players in the micro weight class, simply because they aren't worth the XP. But Baleen is so efficient at catching Krill that whales can rack up an absurdly high KD ratio, enough to offset the low XP value from each individual Krill. 
There's something about the largest builds in the game having a game plan centered entirely around winning against the smallest players in the game that doesn't sit right with me. But I can't deny that Baleen Whales are nearly invincible because of their size, and because of that they earn a pretty easy A tier spot. The only builds that can pose a threat to them are humans and the top contender on this list. But this isn't to say that you can't make the giant style build work while still retaining what makes the cetacean build interesting. The sperm whale retains all the awesome cetacean abilities and has some pretty powerful stats to back it up. And it uses them to fight against some of the most powerful opponents in the entire ocean server, the giant squid. Sperm whales have mastered the giant squid matchup, and despite the squid's claws, beak, and superior mobility, the whale wins almost every time. That's it for A tier, but we've still got the top tier left. First, we've got the best intelligence build in the entire ocean server, the Bottlenose Dolphin. They're by far the most widespread and numerous cetacean build, and it's no surprise why so many players chose the Dolphin as their main. Even though they didn't spec into the Baleen trade, they can still catch a huge amount of small fish by using their intelligence and team strategies to set traps, meaning that a coordinated assault by a group of Dolphin mains can easily mean game over for entire schools of fish. Dolphins have great matchups against the other top tiers of the ocean meta, like the Octopus and Shark. Their echolocation completely negates the otherwise undetectable stealth that octopi have in their shapeshift ability. They're pretty much defenseless once detected, as even their ink cloud ability doesn't counter the dolphin's sonar. Sharks are a different story. Sharks are perhaps the one build in the game with an even more powerful sensory ability than dolphins. Electroreception allows them to sense any movement made by a nearby player, and works in a full 360 degree circle around them, not just directly in front like sonar does. So you'd think sharks would be a huge problem for dolphin players, and one-on-one, -on -one, they certainly are. Especially since dolphins don't really have any powerful offensive moves. But because of the dolphin's intelligence, they know exactly where to hit a shark in order to deal maximum damage, the gills. A few good head bashes to the gills is enough to turn the tide of battle pretty quickly against them. Dolphins are even good at messing with humans, something very few builds actually succeed at. But if you want to really be able to bully humans, you're going to need to play as the number one build on this list which is coincidentally the number two ranked build in the entire game, second only to humans themselves. And this is of course the Orca. Orca mains are the most disrespectful BM players in the history of outside. Their up throw is second to none in terms of damage, and gives the victim plenty of time to contemplate their poor character choice. Orcas are also perhaps the best marine build for dealing with platform campers. Their high intelligence level enables them to either bait an approach, or if that doesn't work, they'll generate a wave to knock their opponent off the board. Their intelligence level is only a tiny bit below the dolphins, but that's plenty enough to give the orca all the smarts it needs to deal with the defensive strategies of the likes of dolphins, seals, and even other whales. They've also got enough smarts to know not to make enemies with humans. There have been no fatal attacks on humans by wild orca mains. Now this isn't to say that they don't mess with each other every so often. Orcas will divert the course of ships, humans will acidify the ocean, you know, classic pranks. But all in all, the orca player base knows that the best way to stay at number 2 on the tier list is not to anger the ridiculously OP human player base. So one question that I get a lot is whether or not I think a cetacean build could supplant humans and claim the number one spot, and unfortunately I'm pretty sure the answer is no. Cetaceans have the intelligence, but I can't see anything beating humans without unlocking some of the higher rungs on the tech tree. And unfortunately these are basically unreachable without control of fire and also eventually control of electricity, both of which are pretty much impossible to unlock through gameplay on the marine servers. They'd also need to put some points into dexterity so that they could actually use tools. This is also really difficult because if they just traded their fins for hands, they'd lose too much mobility to be able to catch fish. They may not be able to build their own civilizations, but they still might be able to build a website using Wix because of how easy they make the design process. Wix is a website builder that's so intuitive that even me, someone who has no experience building a website, was able to make a fantastic looking page to showcase my work. I mean, just take a look at some of the stuff I was able to make here. This is pretty cool, right? I think it's pretty cool. They take care of all of the behind the scenes stuff and do all the heavy lifting for you, leaving only the fun creative part for you. They've got templates for just about everything you could possibly need. So whether you want to build a website for your business, blog, online store, or something else, Wix is definitely the way to go. I actually had a ton of fun tinkering around with all of the options, and I think you will too. So, if you want to build a professional looking website, head on over to wix.com slash go slash tierzoo, or click the link in the description to get started. Thanks for watching, and thanks especially to my patrons on Patreon, both for supporting me and for suggesting this video. 
I hope this video will help you in your quest to succeed in the game of life. Until next time, good luck out there.